let's get started with the very first part that's going to be indices. So whenever we write five, two times five plus five is basically 10. So it's five into two, five plus five plus five, three times is five into three fifteen, right? So the number five, when added n times, it's basically five into n, right? But if I want to ask you, if I, if I'm multiplying the number five n number of times, okay. So what is uh, repeated multiplication? Okay. So five into five into five into five n times it is denoted by five raised to the power n or five raised to n. This is basically the meaning of a repeated multiplication. Okay. So repeated multiplication can be represented in this form. Okay. In this form, I have two parts. Okay. The first part is five here. This five is called as the base or also the radicand. Okay. And the N it is called as power or the index. All right. So we learn from this that indices mean repeated multiplication. Whenever you have an index, whenever you have a power, okay, you basically mean repeated multiplication. All right. So there are certain laws or properties you require to solve the questions based on indices. This is a very basic example, which I have taken. So three raised to M is nine raised to nine. Okay. The idea behind all of these variable based questions is you make the base same on both sides, or you make the power same on both sides, whichever is uh, feasible, whichever is practical to do in the question. And uh, after that, if the bases are same, you equate the powers. If the powers are same, you equate the bases and check. Okay. So uh, 3 raised to M is equal to 9 raised to 9. Okay. 3 raised to M, I can't reduce 3 further. 3 is already a prime number. But if you observe carefully on the right hand side, when you have 9 raised to 9, this 9 raised to 9 can be split as 3 square the whole raised to 9. Isn't it? Now it is the third property we saw, right? The A raised to M, the whole raised to N is equal to A raised to M into N. So here, on this side, right hand side, you will have three raised to two multiplied by nine. So the right hand side is basically three raised to two nines are 18, right? So the question tells you three raised to M is equal to three raised to 18. Three is the common base on both sides. Just equate the powers. You get M is equal to 18. And that's the answer for your question. Okay, guys. So this next question, uh, you can try it for yourself. Uh, I want you to just pause the video and take two minutes. Think about it. How can you go about this question? Okay, so let's solve this question now. Uh, 90 raised to 90 is 9 raised to 9 into 10 raised to 10 into 9 raised to A into 10 raised to B. If you look at the right hand side now, the right hand side contains powers of 9. Okay, and powers of 10. Right? Powers of 9 may you can apply the first property of indices. A raised to M multiplied by A raised to N is A raised to M plus N. The powers get added. Right? So 9 raised to 9 into 9 raised to A. It's simply 9 raised to A plus 9. Isn't it? Similarly, if you write 10 raised to 10 into 10 raised to B, when you multiply these two terms, it will be 10 raised to B plus 10. Right? Okay. Now, since we have powers of 9 and 10 on the right hand side, on the left hand side, we get a hint that 90 ko hume split karna hai, you know, in powers of 9 and 10. So 90 raised to 9 can be split in terms of the fifth property we saw here, the sixth property, sorry. Okay. So we'll do it here. We'll write 90 as 9 raised to 90 into 10 raised to 90. Okay. Since both are equal, now the only, only step required is to observe the bases and their powers. So 9, 9 raised to 90 on the left hand side is equal to 9 raised to A plus 9 on the right hand side. Just equate their powers. 90 is equal to A plus 9. So A plus 9 is equal to 90. That gives you the value of A directly as 18. Okay. Similarly, you can compare the powers of uh, like B, uh, the powers sorry, the powers of 10 on both sides. So 10 raised to 90 is equal to 10 raised to B plus 10. That gives you B plus 10 is equal to 90 or the value of B as 80. As simple as that. Okay. If you take three square, now we know three square is equal to nine. Or now if I take square root of nine, it's simply equal to three. Okay. That means nine is going to be a perfect square, right? Similarly, uh, if you take the cube, phi ka cube, phi ka cube is 125 or cube root of 125 is simply equal to five. That tells you what 125 is a perfect cube. All right. You can take the example of minus three also minus three cube is minus 27. Or if you take cube root of minus 27, you get the answer as minus three. So minus 27 and 125, both are perfect cubes. Okay. Yeah, so observe karte hai, guys. Whenever you take square root of a perfect square, okay, it is going to be a na uh, natural number. Okay. We have also discussed this in detail in the numbers theory. We saw introduction to numbers, right? So whenever you take square root of a perfect square, it's always a natural number. 
also whenever you take the cube root of a perfect cube it's an integer okay so in a nutshell if you take nth root of any perfect nth power the answer is going to be an integer like a perfect square hua uska square root liya answer will be an integer next little number specifically okay a perfect cube hua you take the cube root the answer is going to be an integer minus 27 ka example liya tha humne right now the problem arises if you take the nth root of any non perfect nth power for example 3 is not a perfect square so if you take square root of 3 will the answer be an integer no it won't be okay similarly 5 is not a perfect cube right 5 ka cube 125 is a perfect cube of course but 5 itself is not a perfect cube right so cube root of 5 won't be an integer right fourth root of 30 fifth root of 45 same 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 thing right so all these numbers jinka example yahan pe diya hai maine all these are basically called as certs so certs are basically irrational numbers they are nth root of non perfect nth powers all right this is square root of 3 not a perfect square 3 is not a perfect square right cube root of 5 not a perfect cube 5 right so whenever you take the nth root of all these non perfect nth powers you get the answer as a cert okay now certs are uh, categorized into two just a different way of depicting them as such nothing different in their functionality uh, certs can be basically represented as pure form or can be represented in the pure form or the mixed form okay just a different way of putting it up as i said okay let's take the example of square root of 180 now 180 is not a perfect square we know so directly writing it as root of 180 will basically put it in the pure category okay it's a pure cert the 180 is not a perfect square isko maine aise kaise likh diya root 180 it is the pure form but we also realize that one 180 ke kuch factors hain there are certain factors of 180 which are perfect squares isko hum square root sign ke bahar nikal sakte hain right so for example if you write 180 as 36 into 5 okay 36 ka root nikal sakte hain yes root 36 is 6 so one more way of writing this is 6 root 5 All right, so just a different way of writing this. Okay, one eighty can be written as six root five root of one eighty. Similarly, cube root of eighty one can also be written as three times cube root of three, because in eighty one there is a factor twenty seven which is a perfect cube. Okay, same way you can write cube root of one sixty as two into fifth root of five, because one sixty can be written as thirty two into five. Thirty two is two raised to the power five. Okay, so the basic difference in the pure and mixed forms is in the pure cert you will always write all the numbers under the radical sign or the root sign. Okay, whereas in the mixed form certain components you can take them outside. Okay, that's the only difference here.